Folks, I have a question for you. When is a minivan not a minivan? Well, I think I might have an answer. And that's because behind me, I have the 2022 Kia Carnival SX. It is not the very top of the line, but it's near the top of the line of their minivan, but not minivan SUVs. That's right, they want you to think that it's an SUV, and we'll talk about that in a moment. But I wanted to point something out. Way back, around 1996, Pontiac introduced the Montana. Now, it's a minivan, but what they did was they threw cladding on it and tried to change the shape and make it look more like an SUV. They were trying to get people to buy them because people stopped buying minivans because people were worried that minivans were going to make them look a certain way. Well, fast forward to 2022, and I think you've got something very similar. Let's talk about what Kia was trying to do when designing this vehicle, because they went through a lot to convince you guys that this is not a minivan. It's an MPV, a multi-purpose vehicle. They couldn't make the back look like an SUV because nobody can. It's a minivan. As such, this shape is necessary and it's a good thing for utility, but not such a good thing when you're trying to convince people that it's an SUV. However, when you look at the side, something happens. Follow me. See this whole area here? This looks a lot like something that Ford or Chevrolet would build when it comes to SUVs and crossovers, which is fantastic even the roof rail, even the height. This has actually one of the highest ground clearances in its class with only one exception. So it's actually SUV looking for the side, ah! except for one thing. Look at this. What is this gouge you say? What is this large door? Well, this is something they can't disguise. They can't fake this. This is a minivan door. You won't find any SUVs with this. It's not a bad thing. You have a wide opening, you have plenty of seating space, but they can't disguise that because it's a minivan. Follow me to the front of the vehicle because this is actually really cool, I think. One of the things that their designers did, and I can tell you it wasn't easy, was they stretched out this whole hood. This used to be a Kia Sedona. That was what it's replacing. And that looked like a minivan with a slightly long hood. This is a super long hood. Look at that. This hood design, this whole front end design, really is very SUV slash crossover like. I wanted to show you something else too. When you look at the front, this whole design I absolutely love. This is actually part of the turn signal. Part of the headlight here, part of the headlight here. I mean, how cool is that? I love the grill too. This is a very three dimensional design, very unique. These things actually kind of stick out, which looks cool. Then we have the design of the new Kia label. Now, for those of you who are Nine Inch Nails fans or Trent Reznor fans, yep, it looks a lot like that. He'd be thrilled. But more importantly, it's no longer the oval shape that they used to have. Now, for those of you who don't know, back in the day, Kia used to actually build Ford products. So that oval actually worked really well for pulling it off, putting on a Ford label, Festivas, Aspires, vehicles like that in the past. They wanted to get rid of that and start with something new. So this van and this new label really does represent what Kia is trying to do. They're trying to make cool looking vehicles, and it really is a cool looking minivan, sorry, MPV, appeal to you. Appeal to people who don't want to be labeled as the minivan driver. Even the cameraman said he pretty much would rather throw himself off a bridge than drive a minivan. But this isn't a minivan, it's an MPV, right? What you're looking at is a 290 horsepower, 3.5 liter V6 that puts out 262 pound-feet of torque. It's one of the most powerful engines in its class. If you're calling this a minivan, it has an eight-speed automatic transmission and it gets 22 miles per gallon combined. Okay, if you look at this engine cover, it's not exactly, it's deceptive. That's what I'm looking for because this is a regular V6. 
In terms of latitude and longitude, let's just say that this does not indicate exactly how it's set up because it's only powering the front wheels. There's no all-wheel drive version of this vehicle, which we'll get to in a moment. Let's talk about competition, but we're only talking about competition if you call this a minivan, because otherwise, it doesn't really have a competitor because it fits in the MPV range. It doesn't really exist, so it's a minivan for now. As such, there's the Toyota Sienna, there's the Chrysler Pacifica, and there's the Honda Odyssey. Now I know there's a couple spin-offs here and there, but for the most part, those are the three main competitors. What's interesting is that they all offer something that's different. For instance, the Toyota Sienna, it's a hybrid and it offers an all-wheel drive system. The Chrysler Pacifica has a PHEV version and it also has an all-wheel drive version. The closest competitor that I can see to this MPV slash minivan is the Honda Odyssey. And that's because the Odyssey only offers front-wheel drive. In terms of performance, they're actually really close and in terms of overall specs, they're really close. So I think if you put it in a nutshell, that would be the main competitor. But with that being said, all of these brands offer a front wheel drive version and all of them offer a ton of utility and space. And that is one of the best things about minivans. They give you so much space, so much utility, the ability to move passengers comfortably without having to climb up or fall down into something. And most importantly, they all fit in the garage. Even this MPV <clears throat> minivan. Let's talk about the business end of this MPV minivan, which is back here. And that's because you get tons of cargo space and human hauling space. That includes, if I can find the right button, here we go. That includes 40 cubic feet behind the third row. Now that is more than anybody else. That is a ton of space and you could put things back here. But what's important is that these seats, just like all the other minivans it competes against, fold flat in here, and it's a relatively easy function, right? You're able to do that, you're able to do that, and those seats can be physically removed. As such, it's able to hold 145.1 cubic feet of cargo space. That is a little tiny bit more than a Chevy Suburban. That is impressive. You know what else is impressive? Completely flat four once you remove those seats. So you can hold a four by eight piece of plywood. More importantly, you can hold several of them. But you know what it's missing? There's no vacuum here. There's no vacuum here. There's cargo space and let me show you this. It's where the jack is. By the way, spare tire is underneath the vehicle. So it does have a donut, but no vacuum. Some of the competitors, like Honda, have a vacuum. So does Chrysler. It does have this right here, which is 100 watts worth of power. Not as much as some of the others. Toyota has more, but at least you can run, uh, you know, power your computer or whatnot while you're sitting back here enjoying all the extra space. Speaking of space, let's talk about those middle seats. Welcome to the Peace Les Resistance. Sorry, my French is horrible. This is really the business part of this vehicle for passengers because obviously this is where they are most comfy. And Kia has managed to make an absolutely beautiful, comfortable interior. However, there is a step above this. It's called the Prestige. And as such, you can get reclining seats with an ottoman and you can feel like you're in first class. What's really crazy though is A, those seats, they don't really come out. They're, they're powered and everything else. And B, you can only seat seven people. And then on top of that, when those seats are reclining, you really shouldn't be behind them because there's only so much room in the third row. But let's talk about the volume seller, the logical seller, which is vehicles like this, which hold up to eight people. Do you have your center seat here? No, it's not the easiest thing to get up. Well, you know what I mean. <laughs> so. You have to find a little tab right here and you have to pull on it and lift, put it in position. Most kids will not sit bolt up, so you have to do that, which works. There is enough room up here for three adults. You can plug in your computer or phone. You have 100 watts right here and you have a 12 volt. 
We also have cup holders. But what you're going to notice is there's not a lot of storage space in this thing. Look at the netting behind the seats. If you pull on these real hard, you might be able to shove a cell phone in there, but that's about it. And cubbies, not a whole lot of them. Compared to the competition, this vehicle has the least amount of interior cargo capacity for items. Yes, it's big, but cubby space is at a premium. Let's talk about these seats more specifically. Always fun when the chunky monkey has to go into the third row, but I've got good news for me. I fit beautifully. Surprising shoulder and elbow room in here too. Yes, you can get three adults, large ones back here. Not super large though. All of the rear windows have this and obviously that's high luxury. I have a tall torso and I have decent headroom and I also have a vent that goes right under my face. Now, getting in and out, well, it's a little bit different because it's not quite as much space as some vehicles. There is one little pull, I wish it was a lever, and the whole thing slides forward. So, I have this much space to get out. Now, let's say I'm back here alone and I have to do it on my own. That means that I've got to reach around this seat and get to this button at the door or pull the lever on the door. Then I've got to get my big butt out of here. Once you're done, slides back fairly easily, ba -ba boom you're done. But I think I need an assistant to show you something you need to know. There are some really weird things in here that we've been discussing as a crew, trying to figure out specifically this middle seat. Now it is as far forward as it can go, and I think part of the reason for that is if you have a little bibbe and you have the seat, you put them in here, and as a driver or a friend passenger, you're able to look at them and coddle them and throw things at them. But this seat does something else entirely different. And I have a theory about that. Now bear in mind, I am the largest physical person at TFL Studios. As such, I'm going to struggle. Keep your eyes on this. Now pulling up the lever and I'm sliding back. There I'm even with these seats, but there's more. All right, and I squeeze in between them. There we go. Bye guys. <laughs> this is as far back as it goes, which is all the way back, but you can only do this with the rear seats completely folded. It's like driving a McLaren F1, or more importantly, look at this. Oh yeah, so who needs those big expensive seats when you can cobble yourself in the middle like so? So my theory is, in Asia, China specifically, because I was there somewhat recently, People love having a limo-like ride. They actually extend the wheelbase on a lot of vehicles. So, minivans sell well there. As such, if you have somebody who desperately wants more space, and they're narrower than I am, which most people in that side of the world are, I would say that this is a logical place to get the limo-like feeling, woohoo, and at the same time, not have a limo. This is remarkably logical or totally bizarre. Let's discuss this center row because it does some interesting things that you may not expect including a folding trick that I haven't seen very often and it only happens if it's at a certain angle but let's be honest it's weird. Let me explain by showing you. So let's say somebody wants to fold this seat forward and the seats like this. BAM! Fortunately, these monitors seem like they're pretty robust and are able to take a hit, but come on. Now, imagine if a kid is there. It will do the same thing if there's something in the seat. Yep. Let me show you something else that was discovered by a producer who came to visit us. I wanted to move the seat, and he went like this, and ba bam Now, keep in mind that if your head is nearby, you can actually hit yourself, hit your head, or in his case, have the glasses knocked off your face. I gotta tell you, it's a little weird. It's this camera, and the other vehicles have it where you can actually look at the kids in the back as they do destructive things, but... You're able to come over here and soothe those children as long as they haven't whacked their heads into it and actually have them hook up. You could put on a USB, you can watch different things, it works with phones, you name it. Then, of course, the kids once again get bored and they come over here. If you are stopped 
the kids can reach this button. Now, the whole purpose of these buttons is to move this seat from back here. Now, can you imagine being a parent and having your kids theoretically be able to touch these buttons? Now, granted, they're going to be in a child seat, right? So they wouldn't be able to reach these buttons. But I'm not. And if I were in this vehicle, and let's say my in-laws were driving this, I would be on these buttons all the time, constantly. <laughs> can you imagine your mother-in-law? Okay. That she, hopefully she's not watching. The point is is that you actually do have a very nice little setup here in terms of entertainment. Oh, and by the way, this. So you can, and yes, we have it on low. We can turn up the fan. Works quite well, and it's easy to reach for adults, but not for children. That's a good thing as well. Overall, back seat design is fantastic, but there are, as I showed you, a couple of unusual things. You say you want an SUV, but you're stuck with a minivan? Well, Kia says, nay nay, because they set up this interior to kind of feel like an SUV, which is good and bad. Let's talk about what we got here. First of all, in this van, you have regular gauges. You can get, in the higher end version, a full LCD screen that gives you a lot more toys, but in this case, you do have your small screen right there, seven inch, and then you'll have this. Ah, look at that, 12.3 inches of luster. And this screen does a lot. It is one of the better ones out there that lets you split the screen and do some unusual things with sounds of nature. Isn't that great? Warm fireplace. This was last driven by Roman, by the way, which is why it's warm fireplace. And if you're wondering about door controls, they're over at your left knee. So are the driving controls. In other words, traction control, driving lane, keep assist, all there at your left knee. Then over here, we have all of your screen buttons here, but they're not actually buttons. See? This is technically like a screen right here and down here as well for your heating and air, all that. But what's unusual is they combine it with toggles, which are quite good. I love these toggles. We have phone charger, Qi. Look at this, USBs. This USB right here goes directly into the system. Yes, Apple CarPlay, Android Auto. And then you have a proper gear lever or lever. It depends on who you are. And yes, oh, it feels great. Hyundai and Kia do have buttons, but in this case, they're not using them because I think they want you to feel more manly when you put it into gear, and I'm completely okay with that. You have cup holders here, place for your cell phone. If you look at things like this fake wood, which feels very nice. They managed to really do a great job with it. And then this molded dash, which does feel quite good. It feels like it's expensive material. And even though the stitching looks real, it's actually not, but it's really awesome. This design on the vents, I especially like. Look at this, it goes all the way across and it's these big chunky components right here to allow you to control it up and down and left and right. Oh, lovely I say. And then of course, auto hold, park, and your drive modes, normal, eco, sport, and smart. Notice how there's no off-road mode? Yeah, that's because this is not an off-roading vehicle. Unusual setup for the front seats for heat and cool. And that's because, let's say I'm going to cool. Yep, turned it on, I'm already at maximum cool. You would think to lower it, you'd do this, but it doesn't work. What you have to do is push up, and you're basically saying less cool, more heat, until boom, you're now in the heated section. And you think, I'm going up to shut it down? Nope, you gotta go down. But there is one thing I noticed, the rear seats, and the third row seats, none of them have heated or cooled options. And I think that has to do with the fact that you can take the seats out. Kind of heavy, nearly 70 pounds. Heavier than some of the competition, but in some cases, some of the competition, they don't come out. They fold into the floor or they don't come out at all. There is one final flaw that I wanted to demonstrate with this vehicle, and there are others that have this problem as well. Now remember when I was talking about the fact that it doesn't have a vacuum? One of the reasons why minivans, sorry, MPVs, the vehicles like this, have vacuums is because kids tend to get into certain types of cereal, and they tend to make a bit of a mess, and it gets everywhere. So. 
What are you gonna do about it? Where does it go? These little round things get into everything. Not just the corner of seats, not just into cup holders, not just into the upholstery in general, but into these cracks. And that, my friends, is a very difficult thing to clean up. I know this from experience. So not having a vacuum kind of sucks. Aha, uh -huh. yeah, that was funny. And bottom line, these tracks, they attract things. Oh my gosh, we're using this MPV to drive off-road. Well, it's on a dirt road. Any van can drive on a dirt road. But there is a positive, and that is not only can this thing drive fairly well on a dirt road, but it drives beautifully on asphalt. Once again, it doesn't have all-wheel drive. And that, to me, is the biggest crime because they want it to look and act like an SUV, a crossover. Well, in my book, what makes an SUV an SUV, or even a crossover in most cases, is the fact that there is an option to have the rear wheels help push you forward. And that is not the case here, which is a shame because it's got everything else. It's got all the ingredients. They need to make it all-wheel drive, and they need to do it soon. Or they need to offer maybe something like Toyota, which is a compromise. It has a totally different system because it's a hybrid, and it can power the rear wheels electrically. Maybe something like that. I don't know. But let's talk about how this thing drives, because currently I'm moving along at a nice little pace on a back alley area, which has poorly paved roads. I'm not hearing a whole lot. Just a little bit of tire noise. This is a very quiet vehicle. And the ride is supple. It's excellent. But when you throw it into a corner, it is going to lean. Not just because it's a minivan, because if you were in a Honda Odyssey, it would actually handle better around the corner. And that's because it's lower. This is one of the higher minivans out there. As such, its center of gravity is higher. However, having a rear passenger or rear passengers, they're not gonna notice anything unless you're trying to drive like Mario Andretti. Or perhaps I should talk about more current drivers. Lewis Hamilton, there you go. Acceleration, brisk. Even up here, at over a mile above sea level, it can get out of its own way quite nicely and it has very good passing power. Altogether, the driving experience is comfortable. The steering feel isn't too bad. The weight of the steering is actually quite decent and the brakes are excellent in my mind. But it's not an MPV, really. It's a multi-purpose vehicle. It is a multi-people vehicle in my mind. As such, when you load this thing with lots of people, it's running at its best. And that's because it's even more comfortable when you have more weight in it. That's because the suspension compresses just a little bit, but you still have the tires and just enough give to make this thing ride beautifully. I've had experience in minivans before, and I can tell you that this, while it doesn't look like a minivan, is an excellent driving minivan. Let's talk about what this minivan, sorry, MPV costs. I'm done doing that joke. The 2022 Kia Carnival SX, as seen, MSRP, $42,770. That is comparable to a lot of other vehicles in its class that it competes against in terms of price. Obviously, this is nearly the top of the line and you can go higher, but you can also get much lower level models that cost a lot less. What's the bottom line for you guys? What do you think? Is it kind of a crossover SUV or is it really just a minivan trying to look like one? I'm gonna leave that up to you, but I am gonna say this, I think, for a two-box vehicle, they managed to make it look interesting, and that's rare. On top of that, they have a beautiful looking interior that's very functional and has some of the best in-class space. Altogether, quite a van, quite an MPV, quite a minivan, quite a fun family vehicle. There you go.